Good afternoon, everyone. It's so good to see everyone here. Can you turn around to each other and smile? <laughs> you know, uh, we are in exciting time. Because in all, all exciting and challenging times, it is the darkest moment. And when it is the darkest, the ch church should shine the brightest. Amen? Amen. 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 You know, the, um, the, the titles of the message today is really when I think about it in the light of all that is happening. You know, from our home, from the school, from the, the nations and you know, the world. Everything seems to spin out of con uh, you know, proportion, you know, out of orbit. And I was just thinking about it and I said, God, what should I share upon? And, and since we are reading Genesis, so I decided to take upon that. And the Lord said in my heart, you know, in a time like this, what does God think of us? And so the title for today is God Thought of You. You know, in the, in the, the slew of, of the things that happen, you know, one thing leads to another, um, the school went into paranoia. You know, the checks were like so airtight. It seems like, you know, uh, the mosquito can't even fly in, you know. You know, straight after Chinese New Year, my number two son has allergy to egg and dairy. You know, the Chinese New Year day, you know, period, he had been eating and, you know, really having a good feast of all the eggy stuff and all the, all the dairy stuff. He went to school with a little bit of blocked nose. And right at the, the, the entrance, the school said, no, 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 he has all the signs and symptoms, you know, go home. So he enjoys a couple of days of without school. You know, as what Isaiah mentioned, you know, suddenly all the toilet paper flew off the shelf. And all the grocery as well. Stock market or some of the supermarket, you know, went up. You know, lo and behold, I was just checking out the people on the ground. You know, after Chinese New Year, there are actually sales going on. And one of the things that's going on is the toilet paper. So the people start buying because Singaporeans know what is a good deal. And when people start buying and then they think, you know, you know, running nose, they need to get toilet paper and then one thing to another. There you go. So for just of us, some of us were curious, you know, the joke around us we are talking about, why toilet paper and all that? Perhaps maybe the face mask run out. The best way is to use toilet paper to wrap around like a mummy. I don't know. I don't know. You know, and if you think about it, the Doscon level has changed. That create a lot of uh, reverberations, uh, reactions, you know, action and reactions towards the what to do. And uh, you talk about corporate and church and all. Everything, everyone is reacting and responding to what is going on. The words for every one of us here is, you know, be safe, be wise. But most importantly, believe. You know, I thank God that today worship sessions, we are brought into the very presence of God. And as we come into the very presence of God, we are reminded once again about the Holy Communion in which the God can watch over us and protect us and heal us. You know, amen? amen. So, I'm calling everyone to be tough. Everybody say tough. tough. You know, trust the Lord, acknowledge Him, you know, and fear the Lord. Don't fear the Wuhan. Don't fear the whatever. Whatever my title and name the change is going on, okay? Tough. Let us be tough in a time like this. Proverbs 3, 5 to 8 says this. Trust in the Lord in all your hearts and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. He will make your path straight. In your coming, in your going, in the decision making and all the kind of stuff, you know, in the midst of the rapid change on the ground that we have to raise and respond to it. Trust the Lord. Acknowledge Him. And the Bible tells us that, that when we do that, you know, and it says, do not be wise in your eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. In the midst of that, let us be tough. And there's a promise in verse 8. It says this. It says, it will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. So people of God say tough. So in a time, you know, when you need to make critical decisions, go back to the scripture again. And hold on to the promise in verse 8. In the midst of all that. Okay? So turn to your neighbor and say, don't worry. My Kia. Yeah. You know, my Malay not so good. Huh? Again, sir, 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 sir. It says, Jagan Bing Bang. Jagan Taco. Okay, okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But anyway, just say, God is in control, okay? So I have given you, you know, 
Furthermore, okay, if you need to meditate and reflect, we have been you know, hearing the sermons of, of divine protection and all. You know, these three verses is very good for us. Psalm 1, 2, 1 verse 1 says, you know, my help comes from the Lord. You know, when I look up to the hill, where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. He is the source of help. Turn to Him. Memorize this. Remind yourself. Place it on the door. Every time you go up, just remember, my help comes from the Lord. You know, Isaiah 41 10 says, say what? Fear not. My care. The Hokkien version is my care. What are you doing? Fear not. I am with you. For I am. The great I am is with you. Do not fear. Joshua 1 9 says, you know, have, uh, be strong and courageous. You know, uh, do not be frightened or be dismayed. We are frightened by what is external, dismayed by what the possibility that runs through our mind. The Bible tells us, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Doesn't matter. Trust the Lord. Tell your neighbor, trust the Lord. Okay? You know, one of the things is that really in a time like this, there's a huge opportunity for us to, to respond and shine as a church and as, as, as a child of God, wherever God sent us. You know, in of the recent times, uh, the, there's an institution near, nearby where, where the young people has to be put on quarantine. And, and by the grace of God, there's an opportunity for us to put things together, about 160 care packs, so that we can, as a church, bless these people in quarantine. Amen? Is it exciting? There's opportunity, right? Uh, I do know of people in my, in my neighborhood, people with no, low immunities, and at a time like this, they can't go out. They're stuck at home. No, there are opportunities for us to really minister to people like that in a time like this. Friends in food and hospitality mission, ministry uh, 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 industry says that 40% of sales drop. Maybe it's a good time for us to pray for them. Pray the Lord will bring business to their, to their, their industry in their work or whatever. You know, pray for breakthrough for them. It's a huge opportunity. You know, one of the, the, the streets, uh, the questions on the streets have been going on in my neighborhood. He says, of all the news that came out from who are infected, wow, how come all from the church, huh? <laughs> and then the naughty one will just look at, you all have been so naughty, right? You know, well, maybe uh, you all cannot your, your discipline, uh, huh? Everybody say no. Good. Because my reply to them, guess what? Because the church has been actively reaching out to people, especially the Chinese national. We love them just as the Lord loved them. Amen? Do not fear, because the Lord is with us. Come, let's pray. Father God, we just want to commit this time to you. In a time, Lord Father, we know where fear increased, Lord Father, let faith increase even more. Lord, when we just want to ask at a time when there is dismay, Lord, we just want to pray that hope increase even more. Lord, in a time like God, when everything went into the uh, state of uh, 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 distress and everybody, everybody looking for their own interests, Lord, let love increase even more. Because at a time like this, Lord Father, cause us and cause the church to arise and shine for your glory and for your name. In Jesus' name, Amen. You know, when we think about you know, creation, universe, and everything else, you know, one of the questions that we often ask ourselves will be, how does it all begin? How does the universe exist thousands and thousands of years ahead of us? How does it all come together? You know, uh, and I pray that as we look into this, we will be uh, 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 encouraged and challenged to think you know, in the light of the beginning of all things, and cause us to look up to God and begin to realize that we can trust in a God who created all this. You know, just a quick run through to frame your mind on the side is really Genesis. The author himself is Moses. Big question, big question, big question. One of the big questions is Moses only appeared in Exodus. So, how come he knows about the Genesis and the beginning? You know, let me give you an example, a uh, possibility, okay? Moses spent lots of time with God. He was up in the mountains for 40 days, 40 nights, right? And when the Lord asked him to write everything down, when I go heaven, I will ask God and ask Moses, uh, huh? this is what on earth I imagine, possibly. Even though Moses hasn't been there in the beginning, God showed him the high-definition display of creation that he displayed for him so that he can record what it is and how is it like. 
you know. Moses recorded it. God inspired him to write it. But most important of all, the Bible tells us that God is the ultimate author. If you trace the whole Genesis to Revelations, the connections that come together, it is mind-blowing and mind-boggling. It's not as if one person writes a book, pass to the next one like a uh, passing of Baton. No, as if it was written on different parts and different areas. And when people start to bring it all together, there's a string of things that tie in from Genesis to Revelations that tells us that there is only one author, God Himself, who speaks words into His people from Old Testament to the New Testament so that everything speaks of His heart for the world and for us. You know, just a quick way of, of allowing us to just frame our reading of Genesis, hopefully that will encourage you to read more. You know, one of the ways is to look at Genesis from a historical perspective, the history of mankind and the history of Israel. And so if you can look at it, chapter 11, 1 to 11, it gives you the history of mankind. You know, you can read all scientific and all the kind of national geography or whatever kind of background reading you want. But the Bible tells us there's a history of mankind through Adam, the first man as well as the history of the nation of Israel. And it began to read the Bible, it began to realize that a lot of the story revolved this nation, and particularly from this man called Abraham, because God made a covenant with this man. All right? Another way of looking at it is really looking at it from the generations. You know, the whole entire 50 chapters, if you break it down, basically there are 12 sessions. And, and, and from that perspective, you begin to see that God work from generations to generations. That His promises and a covenant to Adam remains the same from generations to generations. And to Abraham, He remains the same from generations to generations. And so when you begin to read the intrigues of the stories of the relationship of the issues and the family squabbling and all the bits of things, this same God who remained faithful from generation to generations because He who promised He's faithful and He will surely do it. So I encourage you, pick up Genesis, read it up and discover for yourself the God in Genesis. So big questions. How can Genesis tell us about God? Science and many people give us suggestions of how things begin. You know, and one of the things that we are more familiar with is this whole thing called the Big Bang Theory. Basically, in a summary, a Big Bang Theory is where two atoms for what to know how many years ago come together, knock each other, create a loud explosion, and with a loud explosion, there is energy, and the energy will, will bring about work done, and then voila, everything happens. Two atoms knock, boom! Whole universe, galaxy, all come in place. Is it possible? Let me illustrate this with this example. Supposingly, you can see with your eyes now in front of me is my watch. Imagine I unscrew every single bit of things. Screw, bolts, nuts, everything, parts. I put it in the box, I shake it one million times. Right? In all the parts in the box, shake one million times, what happened to the parts? Knocking each other, right? Would I say at the end of the one million times of shaking, I open the box, Wow, the watch come back together again. To me, when I think about Big Bang Theory, and I think seriously about it all, are we a product of chance? That in a matter of just a two atom, not each other, big explosion, energy, everything happens and therefore you happen, I happen. Does it make sense? To me, in a simplistic sense of looking at it, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And that leads me to the next part where evolution theory. Evolution theory talk about by you know, Charles Darwin and by looking into the natural world and looking at the insects, plants and all that, creatures who uh, re-adapt to the changing environment, begin to grow and change and adapt and evolve. Right? Evolution theory basically says you know, that, 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 that we evolve from a, a lesser form to another form. All right? So the case in point is, long, long time ago, the suggestion is <laughs> You've been to the zoo, right? You've been to the zoo, you have seen the monkey, right? Have you seen one monkey, if you happen to see one, tell me, that sit down there one day doing this, having a deep thought 
about what is the meaning and the purpose of my life. <laughs> what am I going to do in the 10 days' time? Or 10 years' time? Do you have that? If you have, please tell me because I think it will be a great miracle. I want to publish it. No. If evolution is a, is, is, is a fact, then evolution should remain constant. In other words, the monkey should evolve continually in our present as well. While humans should evolve at the same time too. Can you imagine seamen in the sea who swim a lot begin to develop gill? Ubo, the cartoon tell me there's Aquaman. Or maybe in the tribal people out in the mountain top, right? High, at, high attitude, you know, seeing birds flying from mountain to mountain, then they start to develop wings. Do you have that? Because it, the theory has to remain consistent. It doesn't freeze and stop in time, right? And when I think about this, some bits of things, honestly, when I think about it, it doesn't make sense. Brilliant as it is, in my own opinion, the theory seems to be a bit absurd. What can Genesis tell us about God? Well, the Bible is not a scientific book, but that doesn't make it any less accurate. In fact, many accounts from the scientific point of view, archaeological uh, discovery and so on and so forth, none has disproved the content and, the, and what is recorded in the Bible. You know, um, even though the Bible is a spiritual book, it is not so distant and removed, high above, that it becomes irrelevant to the day and the issue and the concern of our life. It is a book written from the heart of God to us, men whom He loved. The Bible remains one of the core material, I believe, that is most, in fact, it is most read, purchased, you know, it's one of the best-selling books throughout all time and all century. So allow me to bring this guy, Albert Einstein. And Albert Einstein, in all his brilliance, he made this statement, I want to know God's thoughts. And all the rest are details. In all his brilliance, when he thinks about the whole things about everything, this guy who created the rev, uh, theory of uh, relativism, and he thinks about it all, he began to realize there is a God. Another guy. Hey, oh, hey. Isaac Newton. You know this guy, we learned it from school, sit under a tree and something dropped on his head. Thank God he is not an Asian sitting in one of those trees because man, who knows the durian might fall on his head, you know, he might not be alive to write the theory. But do you know what? These, these, these people, these great brilliant people, well, they are scientists, but they are theologians. And <laughs> Isaac Newton wrote about the prophecies of Daniels, you know, and, 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 and uh, revelations. Amazing people who are brilliant in their research, and yet their mind and orientation is re re uh, reconnected back to how they interpret the world through the light of the Bible. So the first point, first point, and if you look at Genesis, as you look at creations, today you're going to look at chapter 1 and chapter 2, right? The one thing to tell us is that from the Bible, it says that God is the creator. It says in Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In other words, that, that there is a person who caused it to happen. It didn't exist by itself for century. There is a beginning. The Bible tells us that God created everything. Genesis chapter 2, verse 4, is talking about, you know, from the God created the heavens and the earth, the, 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 the words change from heavens to earth and become earth to heavens. It, if you turn to the Bible, you look at it, and it says this, that, that God changed, uh, uh, the perspective changed from heaven to earth, is earth to heaven. Uh, my suggestions as we look about this is really, why? Why is there a need for writing a chapter 1 on uh, creation and chapter 2 on creation? There's no need to write so many words where you talk about the same thing unless it's a matter of perspective. Chapter 1 tells us it's a cosmological perspective that, that, that from God's point of view, how things were all created and, and, and made. And chapter 2 is where from 
the earth point of view, man point of view, looking up into how the creation comes to being. So, in short, in the beginning, God. Not evolution theory, not Big Bang theory. This is biblical, spiritual principle. In the beginning, God. The Bible tells us that in Exodus 3.14, He says, I am who I am. When God chose to reveal Himself to Moses, the very de declarations of who He is, is the I am. I am the constant, never changing. There is no past tense with me. I am the same. I am who I am. And the, and the Bible tells us it is Alpha and the Omega. You know, um, Revelation 1.8 says, He who was and is and is to come. He is the beginning. It's both happening in Genesis and Revelation and even in the Gospel all at the same time. Think about it. If God is trapped by time, He is no God. But God who created all things, created time, the galaxies and the earth, everything else, whom we are stuck, we will age. But God is at the beginning, at the end, all at the same time. Because God is not bound by time. He is the creator God, who was, who is, and is to come. He is the Alpha and the Omega. Acts 17, 24, 27 says, The God who made the world and everything in it, being the Lord of heaven and earth, he is the creator, full stop, in the beginning, God. So I'd like to suggest that from the Bible, it says that God is uncreated. No one created God. If God is created, then the one who created God is greater. In fact, one of the, the, the uh, Francis Schreifer wrote about this, as you think about it, that God is the uncaused first cause. If Genesis onwards is the first cause that leads one to another, that there must be a time where the one who caused the first cause. And the Bible says, in the beginning, God, He's the uncaused first cause. He's unchanging. He's perfectly, He's perfect and good. And therefore, if you look at the Bible in Genesis 1 and 2, it tells us only of two simple reality. That one, there is a creator Two, there is a created. Let this soak in. In a time like this, when the environment, the external, the fear of threats of viruses and diseases, in the times where everything is not be within our control, in the beginning, God, only He who reigns supreme over all, in the beginning, God, how do we respond to a God who is a creator? A quick response is, you know, sometimes when we feel ourselves overwhelmed and weary, perhaps it's the sign of that we are trying to, be, to live an independent life. Nothing wrong to live an independent life. From the moment on the go when we were taught to, you know, to walk and uh, able to do things ourselves, our parents will do what as parents what we do to our children, Feed yourself. Wear your shoe. Put on your clothes. Go and pong pong, you know, yourself. Go and shower and clean and all that. It's well and good. But the thing is, right, the major part of our whole life is to be independent. But in, if you look into the scripture, but there's one truth that we need to abide in or remember that we can't be totally independent. And when the things in our lives start to turn and change and everything is not within our control, you and I begin to realize that we can't be independent because we are incapable of solving a lot of things or dealing with a lot of things in our life. It is as time like this. It's a strong reminder again that you and I need to trust our Creator God. He made us. He thought of us. He has a plan for us. Second, is God is a relational God. As we look into creation, it is not just a story of how things happen and how things are made. The Bible tells us 
that this all-powerful, all-present, all-knowing God is an all-loving God. The Bible tells us in Genesis 1, 26, 27, and He says, Let us make man in our image. Think about this. If God is one and one alone, love doesn't make sense. You get it? Because love requires an object from which the affection can be channeled towards. Imagine if the God is just one and one only. It doesn't make sense. Therefore, if there is supposedly bring the concept of love into the one person who self-exists before all things, that one person must do this. And that he loves himself so much. No. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit in which there is a community, in which there is a relationship between God Himself. Therefore, it says in the beginning, God says, let us make man in our image. The whole initiating, initiation to make man, it is because there is relationship exists between the three Godhead. God is making man so that man and God have relationship. Don't let that uh, 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 don't miss that as, as you think about this whole thought about creation that God who created all things created man because you want to have relationship with man you know as we think about it uh, John, John 4, 7 we talk about this you know the whole idea and the whole concept in which God made man and, and, and the whole idea is the whole concept is God is love that God loved us and He made us in order that we have a rela loving relationship with Him. You know, it says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. And as he went on further, he began to realize, he said this, that, that this is the love of God that was made manifest among us, that God sent His only Son into the world so that we might live through Him. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but God loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiations of our sin, to pay the penalty, the divine exchange, for all the sins and the penalty of sins that are over in our life, God sent His Son and paid it for us. And this is love. And so we begin to look at Genesis chapter 1 and the six days in which everything was created. The first five days, God made everything to make the earth ready for man to live in. In other words, God decorated, dressed out the creation and, and, and the earth so that on the sixth day, man can live on earth. And like God, who had dominion over all things, God gave man dominions on earth. Think about this. If you think scientifically, every event and things happened and created on the first five days, imagine you change the sequence. The earth will not be ready or not suitable for man to live in. Every single bit. While well, the Bible is not a scientific book, but yet it is scientifically accurate. Any wrong sequence in the first five days, not ready for man to live in. But the Bible created everything as if really culminates to the epitome of, of everything that is created from the galaxies, the vastness of everything, and down to the earth and to the day by day. On the sixth day, God made man. And think about it. We are called to be human. Human what? Being, right? Have you heard anyone tell you it's human doing? Pause, think. For the moment man exists, created, they enter into the seventh day. What has happened the seventh day? Sabbath. They enter into the presence of God. That God made man to have that relationship. And right at the seventh day, man entered into his presence. The first, first moments of their existence, man entered into the divine presence of God. 
And so the Bible says, Genesis 127, that God created man in his own image of God. He created him, male and female, he created them. God made us. Now let me sh share this point to, 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 to let us think a little bit further. I talk about God who lived beyond time and space, therefore he's the beginning and the end all at the same time, right? My suggestion is you want to read the beginning of all things, don't read Genesis chapter 1 or 2. Actually, it's Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1 says this, right? He says that He chose us in Him before the creation, the foundation of the world. In other words, before Genesis 1 starts, here, imagine this is Genesis 1, here, God thought of you and me. That you came into the very thought of God before all things exist. Genesis 1, Ephesians 1 tells us that God thought of us and therefore He go about creating the creations and all things. You and I are not a product of chance. You and I are not a product of evolution. Because if you really think about this, it brings to questions to many other things. Because if you're, you and I are products of chance, therefore, meaning and purpose doesn't really matter. You so happen as this. So if you so happen, disappear, doesn't really matter. If you want to bring evolution theory to the fullest, one of the things about evolution theory is the survival of the fetus. And therefore, in the animal kingdom, the fetus animal will eat the weakest. And therefore, if this theory is consistent, it doesn't matter if I see an old woman cross the road, right? Too slow, I kick her. Hey, amma, ke baniao la. Pai tui. But the fact is, if you see a young man kick an old woman, what happened to us? Do we sit down there and laugh? We get angry, right? And the fact that we get angry because in our hearts, God has planted within us conscience, the sense of right and wrong. We know in our hearts, this is not right because God created all things. Everything is subsumed under the whole understanding. There's a divine being who controls everything. God set in all human a sense of a conscience. I'd like to share this to, to illustrate from my own personal life story. I grew up in, in a home where, where really, as I think about it, I shared some of my stories uh, before. You know, I, for the major part of my life, I do not know what it means to be loved. Because the very hand supposed to nurture me became the hand that hit me. Not for the wrong I've done. Or the very hand supposed to feed me became the hand, you know, you know, that gambled the money away. And growing up in a home like this, I began to think about all things. And thanks be to God, by His grace, my, my parents are safe. Many years later, when I think and look back, my parents do not know any uh, better. They are stuck in their own situation in the blindness and the, and the bondage they found themselves in, and then they have children, and they, they are trying to do it, and they didn't, they didn't know how. It doesn't help when I begin to compare myself with my other relatives, my cousins, and compare my parents to their parents, and I begin to think there's an imbalance when I look at that. And a lot of things became like very true, you know, like, where, where I come from, uh, it didn't say for my mommy's tummy, you know, you're from the rubbish bin. I began to think that maybe, maybe it's true uh, from the rubbish. Uh, not important. These are the lies the evil one saw in my life. I remember one, in, one, one of the times when I grew up from, from, my, from my childhood and I was involved in some Chinese uh, uh, religion and all the kind of things that they do. I found whatever reason, I found a cross uh, in, in one of my mom's drawer and all that, and I look at it, I say, wow, this is very nice, you know, because my mom's side, they are, they are, they are Roman Catholic. And I saw the cross, and I, I put a string and hang on my head, my neck, and I thought, this is quite fashionable, eh? 
until I went to the, the house shrine and one of my friends looked at me and said, Hey, why you wear this? You cannot, you cannot wear this. And I was like thinking, why, 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 why not, why not? He says, this is Amosin, you know. This is the Western God. You cannot wear this way. The two God clash, you know. And I young, couldn't understand a lot of things. And I took the cross and I ran back to my home at the, at the, at the, at the kitchen area, you know, where the, I stay on ground floor, right? There's a grass patch. I dig a hole and I put the cross there and I bury it. And I say, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, sorry, uh, I'm all seeing, I do not know. Uh, okay, okay. But you know what? Despite all that lack of understanding, this same God never stopped pursuing me. Never stopped pursuing me. I still remember that when my aunt was converted, or she came to know the Lord in Australia, brought the gospel home, shared with my grandparents, they became Christians, and she started to share with the nieces and nephews. And my cousin Derek came to me one day at the playground. I was hanging myself at the monkey bar. You know, I'm really a laukawa. No, cannot. Not a gorilla. <laughs> I was hanging at the monkey bar. He came, came around and said, Aseng, Alan, you like to eat chicken wing? Of course, I, I just hang there, look at him and say, of course. You know, you want to eat chicken wing forever? I look at him, of course. <laughs> this one day old Christian, no very limited things about Jesus, came to me and said, believe in Jesus? You eat chicken wing forever. <laughs> Whoa! I hang there and say, of course! <laughs> I went to church. I heard about Jesus. I heard about forever. I never hear about chicken wing. <laughs> but you know what? This God never stopped pursuing me. I had my wandering years. You know some bit of the story, but at the critical time, He turned me around. And he allowed me to encounter him at the, at the days after my grandma passed away. I had a supernatural encounter with the divine God. I began to feel the love of God coming to my heart. This creator God and the relational God never, never stopped pursuing me. Ephesians 2 10 says this, For we are His womanship. That God is doing an intriguing, well, intriguing, intriguing, no, intrigue, intriguing. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say. He's doing a, such a wonderful work. <laughs> Intricate things in our life. That we are His masterpiece, whom He will present to all the creation and say, Look, this is my son and this is my daughter. We are His womanship. He prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. This is what the Lord says. Whether you know Him, or whether you have yet to come to know Him, or you are here, or you are on, on, in, the, in, the, in the internet watching this, whatever state you are with God, doesn't matter. Because He is who was, who is, and is to come. He is constantly at work in you and my life so that you and I will come to a relationship with this divine God. I was sharing something on the Facebook recently, two incidences that got me thinking, and perhaps this would be something that you and I should think about in the light of what's going on in, in Singapore. Uh, recently, I have a neighbour who just moved across mine. It's a two unit facing each other. My old neighbor rented it out to a, a, a researcher and a family uh, in December. They are Chinese national, doing research in NUS. And they came into the neighborhood, and then lo and behold, from December, January, February, all the things happened, right? The first day of Chinese New Year, I opened my door, I stepped out. The husband and I opened door together. He looked at me, I looked at him, he inside the gate, I outside the gate. And the first thing he said to me, instead of Chinese New Year, first day, uh, I didn't go back to China. <laughs> And then when I look at him, right, and I say, don't worry, I'm not afraid. Happy New Year. Amen. A few days later, I went down the lift and a nearby concerned neighbor came to me. Hey, 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 hey. Alan, your new neighbor, Chinese national. You know what I say to him? 
He didn't go back to China. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> Things like this cause us to behave in a manner. Sometimes we think seriously. It's illogical. Is the video ready? Let's watch this. It is set in Italy. God, at a time such as this, as, as we look at people around us, whether they look like Chinese national, by the way, you're all yellow, <laughs> or whether it's a little sniff or a little cough, remember they are made in the image of God, that God loved them and they are precious and dear in His sight. As a time like this, remember, God is love. Those who do not love, do not know God. And the Bible reminded us, is what Christ told of the disciple, By this all men know you are my disciple, if you love one another. You know, as a pastor, I know that God has called me to uh, the ministry in which involve people. I'm not saying this because I, I, I want to be, you know, an uh, uh, act hero, you know. Uh, all the heroes are in comics. But I know that God has a certain call over my life in, in, the, in the kind of ministries that should be discharged from my call. And one of the things I know in my heart, when a person needing a prayer, I shall not reject. And we don't have to be a pastor to do this. And in fact, you know what? You're all saved and called by God to be His representative, to be His ambassador into the place and the space in which God calls you to so that the glory and the love of God can be extended out through each one of you, just as to me. Earlier on, I was up there sitting at the bench with Dave talking about things and all. And an elderly lady came, and the elderly lady carried a bag and stuff, you know, and all, and walking quite awkwardly. And then he, and we just say hello, hello, and and then she started to tell us all the problems she has on her body. And and out of that sense of love for her, and we we say, you know, Auntie, why don't you sit down? And with all the bags and stuff, and she put down, and then we begin to say, Auntie, can we pray with you? And then then, then you know, really doesn't really matter what she's going through in terms of the physical thing and we begin to pray and lay hands and pray for healing over her brother and sister in Christ when the Lord bring you into encounter with people who need His touch and needs His love and needs His healing will you be willing and ready to step into the very place that God calls you he, you are His workmanship called out to love this you know people of God let us arise as we take these times and stand in the very presence of God and I want to encourage you to enter into a conversation with God wherever you are. You know, dialogue with God right now. Don't worry, He's the Creator. He can do multiple conversations all at the same time. 
and allow the Lord to speak into your spirits and what's going on. And whatever matter it may be, or no matter how trivial or how severe, know that the God Almighty, the Creator God who makes you, He knows you intimately well. And that before all creation, He thought of you. Your life are in full display in His hand. And that this very God says that, Son and daughters, I love you. I love you. I have a plan for you. Do not fear. Do not be dismayed. For I am with you. I am with you wherever you go. We are living in an exciting time. Exciting time. Not scary time. Exciting time. You know, while, while we as a church want to be responsible, we are ready to hold and, and, and suspend even HG meeting. You know, HG is just a program and a platform useful for evangelism. Do we stop? Do we stop when a time like this we say, okay, no HG, don't need to share evangelism, share Jesus. No. Because call, God called us to reach the helpless, the lost, the least, the anyone of who do not know Him because He wants to give them life. He wants to give them love. He wants to cast light into their situation so they may see Him. So wherever you are, engage in that conversation we got right now. Pray to the Lord right here, right now. Whether you're physically here or you're on the internet on the screens, doesn't matter. Because God Almighty is with you wherever we worship Him in truth and spirit and in truth. Whatever issues, bring it to God right now, right here. Come, let us just release in prayer. Let's pray and intercede whatever there is. Yes, Lord. Lord, cause love to increase among us here, right here and right now. Lord, cause compassion to increase right here and right now. For all the people who are quarantined, the people who are living in fear, Lord, we recognize and we know even the Chinese national, Lord, we love them. We love them. We love them because God, you love them. And Lord, as I pray, Lord Father, cause us, cause the church in Singapore to arise so that God, we will sensitively and sensibly, Lord Father, reach out to these people. Reach out to anyone, Lord Father, in our society because such a time like this, Lord, cause your church to arise. Cause your church to arise in faith. Lord Abakura, encourage your Father. Lord Abakura, bashona da 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 da. Hold up, Lord Akira, bashone. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let's stand into the place to pray and in the seat. Lord Abashona, ba da 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 Akira, ba da ba da ishende. The perfect love dries us off here, and then knowing the God of love, the God of Creator God, there is no need to fear. Lord Abashona, ba da ba ishende. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that those who are caught in the bondage of other of fear, Lord, we pray, Lord, your light and love will shine through, Lord, Father, in a time like this. That, our, Lord, even they are stuck in a home, Lord, Father, I pray that, Lord, your, your, your divine presence, Lord, Father, will come upon them. They bring about a realization, Lord, Father, there's a God who loves them. Lord, we know the world of our technologies is powerful. Lord, Father, cause they are, they are scrolling on the phone. With the social media, Lord Father, they begin to hear the words of life, words of faith, words of hope. Because God who promised is faithful. Spirit of God, we ask that God, you stir up us, O oh Lord. Stir up our spirit within, O oh Father. Yes, Lord Father, stir us, O oh Lord. Yet yeah, God calls us to go out and touch life, O oh Lord. Cause us, O oh Father, to look at people as human beings, Lord Father. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. 
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Come, let's sing. You are here. You are here.